Welcome back. Yes, the leftovers, the residual, and of course, twice, dual. Well, David, somebody was uh, telling me just the other day that, uh, you know, they had 11,000 or 12,000 or whatever it was, followers <laughs> on Twitter, as you do. Uh, but Twitter, now, it's a... a a phenomenon of yes. communication, but is Twitter in the dictionary yet? No, not as yet. In fact, uh, I spoke a little earlier this week about words as sort of waiting to get into the dictionary, and that would be one of them, because it has been such a, a surge uh, in social networking, uh, the micro-blogging site of Twitter. But the word Twitter itself, with a uh, small t, has been in the dictionary for centuries, and that is to make tremulous sounds, to chirp, uh, or to, to giggle as well, to Twitter. Um, now, it's uh, most likely the uh, onomatopoeic term, but the word twit itself actually has uh, old English uh, roots because to make a post on Twitter is to tweet, which keeps to that bird idea, although cynics sometimes say that it is to twit. <laughs> twit, which means a fool, also means to tease, and it comes from old English uh, witten, which means to jibe or tease, and that stems back to another word, witten, which means to blame. So essentially someone who is blameworthy is the culprit uh, or the patsy or the scapegoat and often deemed or framed as being the fool. So twit really is quite a, quite a negative word. It is a negative word, but a similar word to twit is twerp. Uh, now, while the dictionary here says origin unknown, there is a crazy story that uh, has been circulated by several sources that uh, in a letter written by the great uh, author J.R.R. R. Tolkien, who's the author of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, now, the letter was published in 1981. Tolkien himself died in 73. But in that letter, he asserted that the origin of the word twerp uh, harks back to a colleague cohort at Oxford University uh, in the 19, uh, 1910, 1912. Uh, his name was T.W. Earp, E-A-R-P. And uh, this man was described as being the last of the decadents. Uh, and in fact, he was the chairman or president of the Oxford Rugby Union and quite a foolhardy uh, character, full of sort of bravado and, uh, uh, you know, craziness. So he could well or possibly be the origin of the word twerp. However, I think that if you do swallow that, possibly, you may be being the twit. <laughs> <laughs> it does have that ring of urban myth around it. It does. But it's a great story. <laughs> Thank you, David. Pleasure. The scores. John is on six and Karen is on 24. Let's head for some more letters. John. Uh, I'll start with the consonant, please, Lily. Thanks, John. B. Uh, I'll go another one, please. C. And I'll go a vowel this time. E. Um, another vowel, please. I. I'll try another consonant. S. And I'll go one more consonant, please. H. And a vowel, please. A. And we'll go another consonant. M. And one more vowel, please. And last letter, U. Thank you, Lily. 30 seconds. yield for you, John? I just had a five. A five? Karen? Yes, a, a shameful five. A shameful <laughs> five. I think we should uh, get rid of the blushes immediately. Uh, it was shame. Shame. And yeah, yours? I had shame as well. You had shame? Yeah. Well, if you could uh, share your shame. And uh, David, well, I've got no problems there, have we? <laughs> Must be talking of all these uh, scapegoats and uh, patsies. Shame, of course, perfectly good for five. What did you find here? Uh, it's a word we've had on this uh, on the show before, Richard. It's an unusual word. It's an element, um, and it's a um, radioactive element called cesium. Uh, C a e s i u m, and it comes from the Latin meaning bluish grey. That is a good find. Very nice. So, Karen and John, five each. Rolling on with the letters, Karen, you to choose. Um, I'll start with a consonant again, please, Lily. Thank you. R. And another. W. And another. B. And a fourth, please. S. And a vowel. E. And another vowel, please. I. And a third vowel. A. 
and a consonant. T. And a final consonant, please. And last letter, L. Here's 30 seconds. Karen, how did you go? I got seven that time. Richard. Seven is great. John? Uh, I got a seven as well. Let's hear yours, please. I had blaster. Blaster and a Karen? Blister. Blaster and blister, David? <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, yes, just exchange the vowels. Uh, perfect sevens. Um, now, this was a, an unusual word. We had to osculate during the week. Uh, now, librate uh, is also a word. And librate is to uh, sway or oscillate. Uh, and librates with an S is an eight. That is a beauty. But Karen and John, seven each. Back to the numbers now. And uh, John, what combination do you fancy? I'll go with one large and five small, please, Lily. Thanks, John. That's one large and five small. And our five small numbers, five, nine, eight, seven, two, and a large is 50. The target to reach, 903. Let's chase it. Spot on. And you, Karen? Likewise, Karen. Okay. Well, John, tell us what you did. Um, I did 50 times 2 equals 100. 50 times 2 is 100. Uh, times 9 is 900. By the 9 is 900. And then 8 minus 5 is 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. And just added them. 903. Well done. Very nice. Some very cooperative numbers there. Straight to the target. Karen? Same. Same approach. Again, would you just uh, verify... Well, they were very cooperative numbers, weren't they, Lily? Yeah, nice and gentle. No problems there. And 10 points each for John and Karen. Very nicely done. John, 28. Karen now, 46, as we head for another break. Now, the word mix for you, it's deed grab this time with the clue, annoyed by an animal. Back shortly. Back <laughs> shortly. 